Hell hello. yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Triple Play Fantasy Baseball Prospect Show with your host, Marty Tallman, and the prospector, Christian Crespo. Today, we are going to break down the top 10 New York Yankee prospects. But before we do that, number one, Christian, how are we doing today? Oh, we're doing great. Excited to shoot off number two after number one. We yep. got great feedback from that one. We did. Um, so thank you all for that. Uh, we're just really excited about this project that we started, and we're just ready to keep it rolling. Yep, we're going to keep it in the AL East with the Bronx Bombers. So the evil empire is up. Um, I mean, I, I think we pretty much know the story of the Yankees. If anyone who knows anything about baseball, they can spend yeah. an unlimited amount of money. They don't necessarily need to build up all of their uh, minor leagues, but they're doing it now, you know, and I think it's something that's uh, been a lot of fun uh, for just baseball fans in general. Uh, Christian, let me ask you this, though. How have you seen the Yankees organization and specifically looking at their farm system over the last, let's say, 10 years? So, I mean, the Yankees are known for, like you said, spending money. They got a lot of it. They're going to spend a lot of it. Um, but they do so in a lot of different ways, and especially when it comes to um, international. They do spend a lot of money in the um, in uh, international signings, and you know you see it um, in their uh, farm system as well. Uh, you can see that they make decent amount of investments in these guys, and it's it's paying off. Their, their farm system, their development is very good, and it's it's paying off because they have a, do have a deep farm system. Yeah, I think we, you know, what we've seen over the last, let's just say, ten years, you know, and something that we're seeing that's a huge difference now is that they are really focusing in on their um, on their prospects. Yeah. Um, I, it, there's no secret that the Yankees haven't been that good at drafting or developing talent, you know, within the United States. I mean, their only really good player of the last ten years is Aaron Judge, you know, someone that they've <laughs> homegrown. Um, but you're exactly right; their international signings have been absolutely incredible. So let's hop into the uh, top 10 prospects. Christian, these are your prospects. So I'm going to have you break down each one. Uh, you tell me why they are where they are. So starting with number one, Mr. Anthony Volpe. Shortstop out of the 2019 draft. He was um, first rounder, 30th overall. In 2021, he played 109 games at A and high A. He slashed 294, 423, 604 with 27 home runs, 87 RBIs, and, my God, 33 stolen bases. I mean, is he a fantasy stud? Tell me about Volpe. Anthony Volpe is not a fantasy stud. He is just a stud because he – I mean, you saw you saw those numbers, but the numbers Amazing. just – speak. the numbers really, you know, don't do it justice because he's just a great all-around player. And you watch him swing. You watch his approach as the play. I mean – He's very relaxed, very loose. Um, he has a strong control, upper and lower half, you know, just control, very composed in the box. He just he just seems so comfortable when he's up there. He has an advanced feel for the strike zone. Um, his pitch recognition skills are elite. And, you know, you, you see it in, in his production. I mean, there's – and just – I mean, he had a 19% K rate in all of last season. That that's gonna try, obviously it's gonna kick up a little bit as it continues to develop and progress in the system. But nineteen percent at that eight, I mean twenty years old. That's a lot of these guys go up Very there mature. swinging. Very yeah, mature they go up there swinging just to try to you know impress around them. But uh, his bat to ball skills, like I said, his pitch recognition skills, he has such a high ceiling and then compare just put that together with the high floor that he has. He's going to be a very, very nice player. Now, as we always like to do, because this is a lot of fun, Christian, give me a player comp. Ah, uh, it, his his skill set is is very it's hard it's hard to compare. Um, but for me, it was kind of like a Ian Kinsler. Okay. Uh, very, you know, up the yeah. middle, he, not too big. You know, very well rounded yeah. player. You know, he could run into a lot of home runs. Uh, especially playing in the AOE, he's going to get that, but very smooth on the field as well. Ian Kinsler really had a nice approach at the play too, mm -hmm. which is why he had such a successful career um, in Texas and you know it, with Detroit and yeah, Detroit. The yeah. stint with the Red Sox. I mean, it, it, it just translated throughout his entire career, and I think that's the kind of player that Volpe can be. I think that's great. Yeah, you know, potentially a 2020 guy, you know, on a really good season, yeah. batting at the top of an order, getting, you know, 80 to 100 runs. That's where I see him, and I think Volpe, mm -hmm. I mean – 
his his year last year was absolutely incredible. So as Yankees fans, you have to be absolutely stoked at what you're seeing from him. Yeah. Number two, let's hop into Mr. Oswald Peraza. So the Venezuelan's 22 years old. He's a shortstop, so a great athlete. Another international signee, this one from the 2017 draft. And his 2021 stat line of 150 games. He played a little bit everywhere, high A, double A, and triple A. But he, all we saw was nothing but success from Peraza. Slash 297, 356, and 477 with 18 home runs and 38 stolen bases. I mean, I guess he could be potentially be your number one, too, with all these crazy stats I'm seeing. Break down Peraza. What do you see there, Christian? The great thing about – the impressive thing about Peraza was, I mean, he – at every – so you saw he made three different stops at three different levels. Leaps. And at each level, he was one of the youngest players in the league. And he continued to hold his own throughout. I mean, he, he's a very, very well-rounded player, um, very athletic. He – Long term, he will most probably stay at shortstop. He's just a very, very good athlete. Um, like Volpe, very good body control as well. A smooth swing from the right side. I mean, it's it's one of the smoothest in their system. It's very, very uh, compact swing. Um, the bat path stays through the zone a long time, so it allows them to hit the ball to all fields and you know be able to pick up and recognize pitches even late and make those adjustments. Uh, it's it's very impressive. Very, very impressive. Yeah, and everything that I, I've seen from him, you know, obviously it's, it's when you're making that many leaps, you know, and you're seeing nothing but success, it's very easy to say, hey, man, potentially he could be up next year. Where do you see his ETA? Uh, I mean, he's still young. So, like, even though he's jumping around, I I, I don't think he'll be up this year. Um, mm-hmm. He's more of a 2023 guy. Okay. Um, but, I mean, he – You'll see with uh, the Yankees farm system, they do have a lot of um, middle infield depth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll see with Volpe, Peraza, we're going to mention another one later from this past draft. Um, So, I mean, and the Yankees are always looking to make moves. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is someone that they might use to make a trade. Or, you know, a lot of talks of them, you know, going after the Trevor stories and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make a big move in the middle infield. So. Last I heard yesterday, Matt Chapman. Uh, they have, there's yeah. been internal discussions that the Yankees may want to make him into a shortstop. So they're yeah, kind that, of all over the place. Exactly. We saw last year with the Joe, Joey Gallo and Anthony Rizzo trade. I mean, they're willing to give up a lot of prospects. You know, to, yep. they have they have to make the playoffs. They have to. They're, they're but, uh, yeah, but you know. that just goes back to you know talking about the depth in their farm system and how yep. well they've developed it uh, to be able to make those moves and still have the. I mean elite talent at still have Volpe, still have Praza. Jason Dominguez yeah. is still there. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Uh, not to, to bury the lead of this guy, but ooh, Mr. Jason Dominguez outside of Bryce Harper, I really can't think of a prospect that's more touted. Everyone's trying to get his autograph at the age of 17. He has security guards at every one of his games. So there's a lot of pressure on this young man, but so far he's, he's lived up to it pretty well. I mean, as much as you can, I mean, some people think he's going to be, you know, Mike Trout or Babe Ruth. I don't know who, but yeah. he's, so, so far the 18 year old from the Dominican Republic, he's going to be an outfielder. There's obviously a lot of questions about his body so far, you know, it's obviously a little bit bulky, you know, not too much room for more growth. But not much another, growth. Yeah. Yeah. Another international signee from 2019, so in 2021, in over 56 games, I mean, he batted 252. He got you the 353 OBP, hit you not, uh, five home runs, nine stolen bases. Where do you see Jason Dominguez um, over the next, you know, four, five, six years? How, how is this kid going to look? So it, he's tough just because he's so young, mm-hmm. but he his body is just so developed already. It's mm-hmm. tough to kind of see how much more it can. And there are a lot of scouts and a lot of people out there that are, you know, wonder the same thing and wonder how his body is going to translate as he continues to get older. Um, I actually was lucky enough to see him live a few times this past season um, at the complex level. And I mean, he just stands out just he's an imposing figure out there. I mean, like you said, he, he goes around with his little entourage already at 18 years old. Yeah. That's that's crazy. I mean, we're talking full blown security like that's Yeah. Where he yeah. Needs it, it. It, like it's, and they travel with him on yeah. the road to these yeah. different places. It's it's incredible. But I mean, there's a reason why he has so much hype uh, behind his name. Um, he de- his swing does have a lot of moving parts to it from both sides of the plate. And, you know, being a switch hitter, it. That, that's another thing about him, uh, you know, being able to hit as well as he can from both sides of the plate. Um, 
but he has trouble kind of putting it all together. You know, his mm-hmm. timing is kind of off. He he does have that big loft to his swing. Um, he struggles with velo at the top of the zone. You know, there's a lot of things that go with, you know, young, yeah. young hitters. Yeah. Um, but he does Being have 18. a lot of hype. Yeah, <laughs> that he just has so much hype behind his name. You could say it's, it's a lot of pressure. No matter what nice. anybody says at that age, I mean, it, the investment they made, I think even $5 million as, as you know, mm-hmm. it's international signing. That's, that's a lot. Um, you know, he has a big leg kick too, which goes with the, you know, the timing issues that he has. So it, it's, it's definitely going to be, I mean, everybody's going to watch and everybody's going to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Um, but like what in a, in a dynasty aspect, since we talk about that a little bit, um, now is probably the time you kind of want to sell him just based off of name value. Mm-hmm. Um, and his proximity is nowhere near close. I mean, he, I, I think his ETA is more like three years down the line. I mean, he's just that young. I mean, obviously they yeah. can rush him and they can bring yeah, him up maybe, quicker, but maybe but up why? At 20, but yeah, like, but why? With with somebody like this, you want to make sure with uh, he has some you know volatility to his game. Yeah. So you want to make sure somebody like this they develop the right way. You don't want to rush him like this because, I mean. Uh, when I think of him, not a player comp, but situation wise, you think of uh, Kevin Maithon mm-hmm. when he got signed um, by the Braves, he got a lot of money, a lot of hype behind his name. Um, you know, ascend- uh, eventually, you know, the whole scandal, he went over and then signed with the angels, but he just hasn't been the same player. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, Dominguez, the Yankees are going to want to make sure that they develop him the right way. And, you know, with what they've done in the past, the, I, I don't see how they don't. Yeah, and I and I completely agree from a fantasy baseball dynasty perspective. I mean, this may be the highest we'll see his, um, you know, his current value. But yeah. just overall, as fans of baseball, the next few years watching Jason Dominguez, it's going to be really exciting. So it's going to be great to see his development. Definitely. All right, let's speak to a guy who's a little bit closer, um, you know, to getting everything going. Mr. Austin Wells from the University of Arizona. He's a catcher, so we all know the uh, the pitfalls of that position from a dynasty perspective. He's uh, out of the 2020 draft, first rounder, uh, 28th overall, 2021, over 103 games at A ball and high A. He slashed 264, 390 with a 476 slugging, 16 home runs, 16 stolen bases. So a little uh, home run run combo from catcher. Um, Christian, where do you, how do you see Austin Wells developing? And do you see him long term as a catcher for the, for the New York Yankees? No, no, I do not. <laughs> um, uh, it, I'm just going to go kick it off. Uh, his uh, comp to me was kind of a Kyle Schwarber esque. Yeah. Um, a lot yeah. of power. Power boy. A, very, a, a very nice, a very nice hit tool too to go with it. So it's not just like he's, you know, all true out, a two outcome player. But mm-hmm. um, uh, he, he's okay behind the dish. Uh, Long term, I kind of see him more as a corner outfielder. Yep. Um, that's what they're hoping at least. Right. Instead yeah. But, them but pigeonholing him the first base, hopefully they can get something yeah. out of him. In the corner I mean, they're playing position. Aaron judge and like center field and stuff they're, they're going <laughs> crazy. So, but I mean, he, he, like I said, his bat is, you know, what, you know, he's known for. Yep. Um, he has a really good approach, a really good feel to hit um, average esque power, a uh, little more than above average. Uh, like I had said previously, but it's going to play. And especially from the left side hitting a Yankee Stadium, it's it's, it's he's definitely going to run into a few. That's just, um, but he's definitely somebody to get excited about just because he does also have uh, very good on base skills too. So mm-hmm. you know, decent all around player. Uh, like I said, long term, don't really see him as a catcher, but he's still going to be somebody of value to that organization. Where do you see his ETA? Uh, I mean, he's he's a big guy, he's a very imposing figure. Um, so he's developed kind of quick. Uh, but I, I would say more 2023 to be you know safe. Uh, maybe he gets up there later on this year, depending on their situation. But I think 2023 is kind of a safe uh, guess there. Yeah, and I think they're going to use this year to really see if they can make him a long-term option at catcher. You know, um, and then yeah. from there they're going to you know potentially have to transition, like you said, hopefully into an out uh, corner outfield position. Or you know if he doesn't hang there, maybe first base. But uh, overall, yeah. overall. I, I think he, he's a solid dynasty investment, and I would just hold on to him right now. Yeah, it's right. kind of just a wait and see. He's one of those yep. guys you just have on your team and, you know, just see what happens. Yeah. All right, number five, Trey Sweeney from Eastern Illinois, 21-year-old shortstop, so another big athletic guy, uh, first round. So they obviously 
They went in for him, 20th overall in the 2021 season. He played 115 games at rookie ball and A, uh, slash 261, 384. Love that. Uh, with the 548 yeah. slugging, seven home runs, four stolen bases. Um, how does Trey Sweeney, uh, how does he look um, coming into the uh, 2022 year? Uh, so uh, it, it was a deep shortstop class, like we had mentioned in the previous video. Mm -hmm. uh, but he really jumped up a lot of uh, draft boards closer to the draft uh, just because of the production that he had his last season. Um, it, it's it's impressive what he's able to do. I mean, he, he does have a very, very nice hit tool. Um, he's also very good, very good uh, discipline at the plate as well. Like Volpe, his K rate was low. Uh, it was around 22% in 30 games. You know, not a big sample size, but he did come in late from, from the draft. But he did – I mean, his OPS was near 900. That's really good, really good on base skills. Uh, defensively, he's not that great of an athlete. I mean, he's going to continue to fill out. So, he mm. might slow him down a little bit. Uh, he probably play projects play more third base um, in the future. But he's still – I mean, a very good – a very good approach from the left side. It, it's – Another guy that he could develop quickly too, um, so he's a good good guy to follow. And you know, it goes back to just the amount of depth that the infield depth that the Yankees have. Yeah. Now, do we have a player comp for him? Uh, kind of Ryan McMahon ish. Okay. All right. I see that. Yeah, very. Yeah. Kind, you know, bigger guy, uh, versatile. He can move around versatile. the field as well, but. You know, he can run into that power. Even outside of Coors Field, Ryan McMahon still has, you know, I mean, he still runs into a few. Yep. He does have the benefit of it playing half his games in Coors, so he does have a pretty good right. power output. But, but um, you know. On with the contact skills. I, I can see a little yeah. bit of a crossover between him and Sweeney. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, Ryan, Ryan McMahon, he, he's not going to really wow you with one particular thing, but he does a lot of things really well. And his approach at the plate is very sound. And that's kind of what uh, I saw in Sweeney when I saw uh, some of his videos. So it, it uh, that's kind of how I got to to that. Great. And let's uh, look at your last uh, number six through ten uh, with Everson Pereira. Number seven, Oswald Cabrera. Eight, Alexander Vargas. Nine, Randy Vasquez. And ten, Luis Eel. So of these five, tell me something that uh, stands out uh, to you, either good or bad. Uh, so a lot of us saw Luis Hill this past season, um, and yeah, he dominated when he yeah, first got up. It was it was really good, and it was surprising too because he didn't have quite the command um, in the minor leagues. So when he came up, his command skills were really good on the mound. Um, was able to really limit his walks. But I think the most interesting one would probably be um, Osvaldo Cabrera. A uh, smaller guy, like around five ten ish, you know, maybe a buck fifty with his uniform on, um, very contact oriented, but he, his approach at the plate is very good. Uh, it's, he's was able to develop more of a, of a loft to his swing, but nothing too crazy. And with that, he was actually able to hit, you know, 29 home runs this past season. I mean, that's for a guy, his size, that's, that's a uh, kind of Jose Altuve ish. If you mm -hmm. put it that way, I'm not, I'm not comparing him. To right. Altuve at all, but I mean, he's a switch yeah. hitter. Um, definitely better from the left side than the right side. Um, but you know, he's just one of those guys that I'm really, I'm really interested in following along throughout the year to kind of see how he continues to develop, especially with the power output that he had. Yeah, and I think that um, you know, going, he's the guy that I'm actually, he's in my big like. There's like ten players that I'm going to be watching a lot, and he's going to be one of them, just because. Yeah. From we didn't expect to see that power, especially from that frame. So it's like it's kind of yeah. like there's um, you know, the sky's the limit with him. Exactly, but, and you know. um, ultimately long term, I kind of see him kind of developing into the same situation as Cedric Mullins. Yep. And I think he just scraps scraps the right side uh, completely. I mean, there are a couple mm -hmm. guys you could say that in the major leagues just by looking at their splits. But um, I think long term, that's probably the best thing for him, and his game would play a lot better. Uh, so. Like I said, be interesting to see, and you know, a slugging second baseman is definitely intriguing. Yep, that's something that uh, any fantasy baseball player needs, as we've seen the second base uh, position has been pretty pretty weak over the last you know five to ten yes. years. But yes, well, thank has. you, Christian. That was a great uh, breaking down your top ten New York Yankees prospects. As always, you can find us on the Triple Play Fantasy YouTube channel. Please like, 
comment, subscribe, retweet yeah, keep us getting on Twitter. His feedback too. The feedback, feedback has been great. Awesome. And that's that's so much fun. I mean, it, just it, everybody's going to have their own rankings and their own ideas of how to rank mm-hmm. these players. Um, so obviously, like, I'm not a professional. I, I this is basically just based off of the stuff I know and what I look for when I yeah. do my own evaluation. So if you guys, you know, want to go back and forth, you know, feel free. I, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on on these lists as Me well, too. especially as we continue this series. Um, but like you said on Twitter, you know, comment on YouTube page, you know, we're, we're open to really anything. So just feel free to shoot us messages. Yeah. You can find me at Marty underscore Tallman on Twitter. You can find Christian at C press underscore 26. Uh, once again, thank you, Christian. And thank you everyone for watching. Like I said, like comment, subscribe to the video. We're going to be coming back. I think the Baltimore Orioles, Baltimore are, Orioles next. are next. Oh, yes, all right. So cool. Yeah, we'll be hopping that, in that, there. That's a, that's a farm system. That's really, it's going to be fun to pay attention to them too. A lot of young guys that are developing yeah. pretty quick. So, there's finally, you know, some um, some bright stars in that dim sky over there in Baltimore. So oh, I'm excited yeah. to, to hop in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye, guys.